Every now and then, people pop into my Twitch chat, <laughs> smooth, and ask me some variant of the following question. Hey, Fallout, I'm new to the game. How do I get good at D2 PvP? There's a lot of ways I could answer that question. You could argue that the best method might be to teach people different strategies based on the game type. You could argue that you could teach people different strategies based on their class. You could take a brand new D2 player and spend hours and hours teaching them advanced movement techniques. Or you could share very nitty gritty and well thought out micromanagement strategies from various content creators. Uh, no, no shade, by the way, I, I love Nomad and I actually do like that video a lot. And you know what? I think from now on, I'm only going to give the most bare bones, basic duh answer I could possibly give to that question. It's going to seem like really forehead advice, but I'm actually really excited to talk to you about it. But real quick, guys, got to take a survey. Have a seat. This won't take long. Now, do you like games? Hmm, interesting. Do you like things that are fun? Oh, me too. Do you like things that are free? Well, according to my research, you are a perfect match to check out Monster Legends. They're the sponsor of today's video. Monster Legends is an awesome free to play mobile game that is available on all devices. You can collect 900 monsters with different elements and rarities to build your empire. As if 900 wasn't enough, they've got new monsters coming out every week. In order to expand your empire, you can breed monsters of different elements and rarities to get eggs of entirely new species. Create the best team you can and challenge your friends or other monster masters in battle where you can conquer trophies, win rewards, and crush your enemies. Get this, there's a place in the game called YouTuber Island where you can find monsters made in collaboration with some of the biggest YouTubers out there. Find your favorite YouTubers, check out their monsters and the awesome skills they chose for them, and put them to the test. Download the game right now using my link in the video description or the QR code literally right here, and you'll get a special free starter pack of 50,000 food, 300,000 gold, 10 gems, and the epic monster Kaori. Big shout out to Monster Legends for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to download the game now and claim your free starter pack, which will help you get a big head start with your leveling. All right, back to the content. Like I was saying, from now on, I'm just going to give the most bare bones advice, which really trumps any other tip I could possibly give. And believe me, we'll get into why and the real meat behind today's video. But here's the only thing you need to learn how to do. Ready? Hit your shots. Imagine this. I program an AI that knows how to play D2. It has average movement skill, average ability use skill, and every time I put it into a game of D2, I wipe its memory so it has no knowledge of the map it's about to play on. The only true gift I give my digital child is the ability to have perfect, dead-on accuracy with every pull of the trigger. Even with no map knowledge, no teammate communications, queuing solo, that AI would not only have eventually go flawless in trials, but would be an extreme force to be reckoned with in game, likely requiring that the other team gangs up on it with team shooting for near every engagement. Look, I know I'm giving very forehead advice here, but that's because it's borderline almost all that you need. I happen to love watching streams and YouTube videos from other people in the D2 community, and a little while ago, I watched a video where my friend ZK Mushroom 1v1'd a trash talker. Aside from being very entertaining, it was almost impossible to not notice that DK Mushroom's accuracy and primary weapon game is straight fire. Granted, in a 1v1 you have the luxury of not being distracted by other enemies who interrupt your duel by shooting you right in the gooch, but yeah, you can see in almost every engagement how accurate of a player he is. And that's a very common theme when you watch people who are extremely successful in PvP. Of course, there's other factors at play too, but again, being able to consistently land shots IMO is the most essential of all fundamentals. If I was trying to teach a player to get good and hitting them with a bunch of fancy top level strategies, well thought out PVP builds, even if I gave them every single god roll out of my crowded ass vault, and believe me, there's a lot. At the end of the day, it wouldn't mean dick if they can't consistently land shots. A long while ago, I fiddled with my in-game settings for both MK and controller after talking to a few friends. After making that in-game change, I felt a pretty good personal improvement in my PvP play. I decided to make a video about that change that I thought would be kind of just a small throwaway video, and it ended up becoming one of the top 10 most popular videos on my channel. I got a lot of great feedback from that video. Turns out a lot of people never really take the time to fiddle 
fiddle with their in-game ADS settings, and they should, because odds are a lot of people out there are very likely playing with settings that don't mesh perfectly with them. It would be akin to trying to be a great runner with shoes that are too big for your feet, or trying to be a great baseball player by throwing a ball with your right arm even though you're a lefty. So I thought it would be fun to do the following. I reached out to 10 different content creators in the land of D2, all of whom I believe are very good at PvP. There's plenty more than 10, so if your favorite PvP player is not on this list, please don't freak out. But yeah, to keep things short, I reached out to 10. Five MK players and five controller players, and I asked each one of them to share with me the following. Their FOV, their in-game sensitivity, their ADS sensitivity modifier, their DPI if they play mouse and keyboard, their sprint turn scale if they play controller, what equipment they use, i.e. what mouse or controller they play with, and any other info they felt might be important to share, mainly regarding aiming, but whatever they felt like sharing, really. First, we're going to look at the five controller players. I'll briefly tell you about each player, then we'll look at all of their settings together, and I'll talk about similarities and patterns if there are any. Controller player number one is Drewski. Drew's a longtime friend of mine and a fellow member of my podcast, Firing Range. Like me, Drew's played a butt ton of competitive Halo in the past, but unlike me, is a diehard, permanent 100% controller main. Controller player number two is True Vanguard. TV is an incredibly good guy and one of the larger content creators who has, for the most part, remained on console throughout the history of D2. While he doesn't do trials carries that I know of, he's widely regarded as a great PvP player and often equips off-meta weapons and or loadouts. Controller player number three is Grenader Jake. Jake is a longtime trial Sherpa dating back to D1. If you open the Twitch directory during any given trials weekend, it's highly likely that he'll be at or near the top of the directory. Controller player number four is Old Man Mikowski. He doesn't play as frequently these days, but he's still a beast PvP main and also a former competitive player. I've shoutcasted a PvP tournament with him before and also shoutcasted a tournament that he was in one time. Controller player number five is Pure Chill. A really kind and mellow guy, Pure regularly does PvP and trials help on the weekend and is incredibly talented. Here are all of their settings and hardware. Some things to take note of. Out of all five controller players, three of them play on max FOV 105. You'll notice a similar pattern later when we talk about MK players. The lowest FOV was Grenader Jake at 95, but he told me he did this for his Twitch viewers. Many of his last gen console viewers were kind of off put by watching 105 FOV, so he tweaked it to 95 for them as kind of a visual compromise. No player had a look sensitivity lower than 6, and no one had a look sensitivity higher than 12. Out of all five controller players, four of them had raised their sprint turn scale up from 0.4, which is the default turn setting. Quick reminder, by the way, that sprint turn scale means how quickly you can turn while running. Think of the old armor mod traction. Out of all five controller players, three of them had intentionally lowered their ADS sensitivity modifier from the default of 1.0. Only True Vanguard used the default settings for both ADS sensitivity and sprint turn scale. Every other player had either one or the other modified. Finally, out of all five controller players, all five either used a controller with buttons or paddles on the back or played using the claw playstyle, i.e. holding your hand a certain way to ensure you have access to all the buttons on the front of the controller while playing. The claw players were True Vanguard and Old Man Mikowski. But again, between claw and paddled controllers, the goal is the same, being able to access all of the buttons on your controller without needing to take your thumb off the joystick to touch them for any reason. Out of all five players, no one played with both a default controller and a default holding the controller style. A few of them had additional comments to share. Pure Chill mentioned the following. I'd say tips for improvement would be taking time to find the best sensitivity that works for you. I'd recommend around 7 to 15 sensitivity. I'd also recommend using targeting mods on armor for additional aim assist. I also use control freaks to help get a better grip on my thumbsticks. Trigger stops on your controller are also very useful as well for FPS games. I'm sure that part about armor mods ain't exactly new info to veteran players, but yeah, if you're new, the helmet targeting mods do provide additional aim assist for your weapon. I appreciate Pure for specifically trying to help out the new folk with that tip. Here's what Grenader Jake had to say. Try to practice and watch people who you think are better than you. Watching better players gives tons of insight into angles and game mechanics you may have never considered, and practicing just by playing helps a ton. Simple advice, but dead on. Watching people who are cracked at the game can definitely lead to overall improvement. Drewski, in particular, mentioned that he 
still sometimes plays Octagon to stay sharp. If you don't know, Octagon is an old Halo custom game type that I used to play, but apparently people still play today. It's spawning in a small room with no cover at all, with only a battle rifle and a sniper. All right, let's move on to MNK players. MNK player number one is ZK Mushroom, who I've already mentioned, but is a cracked trial Sherpa and overall PvP legend. MNK player number two is Cami Cakes. Cami's a longtime buddy of mine who started his YouTube channel around the same time I did. Cami also has a really deep knowledge of the game that can translate to unusual strategies, which I really enjoy. MNK player number three is Walla. Walla is a long time tourney player, even though the D2 tourney scene ain't exactly popping right now. Doesn't matter. If there was a tourney tomorrow and Walla was in it, my money would probably be on him and whatever team he'd be on. MNK player number four is Kuj. Kuj is a former trial Sherpa. I think he still does help people go flawless every now and then, but he's not a full-time content creator. Doesn't really matter though, because he still goes hard and he's a great PvP player overall. MNK player number five is Ill Physics. Probably one of the grossest primary shots I've ever seen. Ill is a regular streamer, PvP player, and scrimmer. Here are all of their in-game settings and hardware. Some things to take note of. All five of these players play on max FOV. Three out of the five run 800 DPI, almost four. Kuj runs 750 DPI because he felt 800 was just a smidge too quick. Walla's DPI was by far the highest out of the entire group, but more power to him for making it work. In-game look sensitivity ranged from 3 to 6, with 4 and 5 being the most common. Cami's in-game sensitivity of 3 was low compared to the others for sure, but he told me, I use low sense because I always wanted the most accurate hip fire from nade launchers, the last word, etc. Three players had a default ADS sensitivity modifier of 1.0, and the other two had a lower ADS modifier of 0.8. Out of five players I spoke to, all of them recommended getting a large, large mouse pad with plenty of desk space. The goal there being to do the majority of your aiming with your arm and only to use your wrist for fine tuning. Most of the MNK players also preferred using a mouse that was light and easy to move. When asked if they had anything else to share, here's what they had to say. From Ill, aim for headshots 24-7 even if you take extra time to acquire the target. Don't settle for body shots and don't be lazy in this regard. Obviously, perfection is not the goal, so folks need not beat themselves up over precision percentages. The goal is that as you get used to a particular hand cannon or weapon, you naturally speed up your shooting, but you're hitting headshots the entire time. Also, when you find a weapon you like, take your preferred role into PvE and practice hitting your headshots there before stepping into PvP. From ZK Mushroom, I look at the enemy's head instead of my weapon scope when shooting opponents. It cancels the bad recoil visual and muzzle flash of some weapons. I definitely got to talk about the slide while aiming method so you can already pre-aim at an enemy instead of aiming mid-fight. Try to aim at the head level all the time. From QJ, I have never personally used any of the aim trainer programs, more on that later, but I do have a very important tip, and that is to get a big desk with a lot of mouse pad space. Having adequate mouse pad space lets you run a lower DPI and use your entire arm to aim, giving you effectively more sensitivity range. This is better than having a small mouse pad and needing to run high DPI to do quick movements, as it will severely hamper your ability to do more finely tuned movements like aiming. From Walla, play harder games to get good at aiming, like Apex or Valorant. Also, Osu is cool too. Aside from Kami's comments on his low sensitivity, he mentioned that he sometimes warms up by playing a game I just mentioned in Walla's comment, Osu. Osu is a rhythm game, think Guitar Hero or Dance Dance Revolution, except for your mouse. While this doesn't exactly translate perfectly to D2, Kami did mention that he felt the game kept him very sharp. It's not that I feel Osu makes my primary shot better, but it helps me not get rusty with M and K. Speaking of games like Osu, I'd heard from another player, Zorbic, about something called Aim Lab. It's a program you can download on Steam with the goal of just 100% practicing your aim. There's tons of games like this out there. Aim Lab definitely ain't the only one, but I did hear that Aim Lab specifically had an option where you could toggle on settings similar to those in D2. For the sake of today's video, I did try out Aim Lab, and even with the Destiny 2 in-game settings and me trying to set up my exact M and K settings 
in game, it definitely didn't feel the same. Specifically, my ADS speed in AimLab felt way slower, even though, again, my settings should have been identical. AimLab seems way more suited for games like Valorant and Overwatch, but hey, just because it didn't work for me doesn't mean it might not work for you. I really recommend that if you don't feel incredibly accurate when you're playing D2, or hell, any game at all, to fiddle with your in-game settings until you find something that feels more right for you. If you're in the mood to tinker and looking for a jump off point, feel free to cycle through the settings of the content creators I've shared in today's video. Or you can try and start completely from scratch and do a little reading. There's plenty of articles out there written on how to find your ideal personal sensitivity from scratch, whether that be on MK or controller. Head on down to the comment section and let me know what tips you have for being accurate or how you found your own personal sweet spot and swing by the Twitch channel next time I'm live to tell me about it. Big thank you to Monster Legends for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to download the game now and claim your free starter pack to help you get a head start on your leveling. Again, link down in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.